Ooh, to recap. Uh, you guys were on a mission on a planet or moon that seemed to be entirely covered in blood. You guys took a sub down into the bloody abyss. Sorry, did you say it appears to be covered in blood? Have we tested it? Do we know if it's blood? I don't believe you did test it in the entire time that you had. Cool, 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 cool. Well, cool. Pego Just said checking. it was blood, and Pego is, in fact, a robot. It's This is true. Yeah. And, and uh, robots have never lied. Well, I mean, a robot can't be wrong, right? Oh, exactly. I we've learned one thing from AI art. It is always 100% bang on when a robot decides to do something. I watched iRobot, and that robot lied. Spoiler alert. That was also a terrible movie. <laughs> okay, well, that's my unpopular po- po- pop culture <laughs> opinion. <laughs> we are, we're continuing the theme of Will Smith classic movies here. Uh, uh, yeah. A classic's a straw, doing a lot of lifting there, but Will mm-hmm. Smith movies indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you guys entered in a sub. Some shenanigans happened. I believe some pegging happened, but you'll have to go back to the old episode to see whether or not that did happen. And the episode ended with you guys crashing into the hull of a ship with the submarine, sinking into the hull and sealing off the ship so that it didn't collapse and leak with the could be blood. Okay. The right. Blood so we got into our dive suits, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think mine was just like a little. A little rubber I pulled over my head, if I remember correctly. Yes, because we didn't have something for uh, for your uh, for your character, apparently. Yeah. So my name be Hel Helen McKeelstern. Um, I'm old, grizzled, missing an eye, and a pe- and I have a peg leg. Um, so I just appeared somewhere on the ship. No one remembers where I came from or when I boarded. Um, I tell people I've been sailing my, my whole life, but um, as soon as I try to do anything, it quickly becomes apparent that I have no idea how to sail. Um, yeah, I have no background because I think I was lazy to do too lazy to write one. Oh, yeah. um, so I said I could be an opportunist, a grifter, or um, just trying to cover up my a bout of amnesia. Um, do I? Do you want to hear my unique talent? Yes, of course you want to hear your unique talent. <laughs> So my unique talent is that I can plug my nose and build up enough pressure in my head to shoot my glass eyeball out like a cannonball. Perfect. Or Sounds I right. guess more, I guess more, more, if we're a musket to size, shot. a musket shot, yeah, would be a good, better one. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. And then we're going to go to Kelly's character. Yeah. So I, of course, am Pego and I am a robot. I fucking and hate you. <laughs> yeah, so if that's much. Much, did that sound closer to it? Because I, I I noticed I can adjust the pitch here, and I think the default is lower than I... I wish I'd written this down. Well, you can write it down for next time. All right. Well, did that did that pitch sound more true to how it sounded before? It, you like, were asking the wrong person because I have a goldfish brain. You mean you haven't watched the, the Pego clips over and over? No, no, no I can't say I have. so smooth. All the memories of this segment just slid right off it. All right. So anyway... Uh, my name is Pego, and I am a robot. And I'm tall, dark, I have very smooth skin, robust and imposing, a little boxy. And when I was editing, you, you made a joke, Nicole, about uh, a YouTuber named Boxy, which oh, I've man. never heard of. <laughs> oh, editing, man, that's like, some old internet shit there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I went to go look it up, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I <laughs> like, I like My life is worse off for having seen that this. That is like early 4chan shit there like my yeah, god so, so fuck you for bringing that up the world's, <laughs> the world's first internet the internet's first simp queen basically yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah basically pego is dormant uh when it's not in use and only came along uh online when the ship went to yellow alert uh pego is programmed to love and not much else uh and mostly programmed to peg all the other options if i recall are in beta mode so who knows how those will go uh, and Pego's unique talent is that they don't need oxygen to breathe. That is a pretty unique talent amongst the crew here. Yeah, and they also have the like the R two D two thing as both yeah, a yeah, gadget their little, and a tool, little pegger there, which I th- I think was slightly damaged, but I can't remember. I feel like it probably was during a pegging operation of some kind. I think it was when I was doing an R two D two operation, but well, yes, that's is that not a kind of pegging? I guess I was pegging the ship. Yeah, yes. that's true. <laughs> 
And finally, last but not least, Tanner. All right, Wellback Willie. Uh, Wellback Willie, uh, old old sailor man type, uh, missing his left hand. Uh, his left hand has been replaced by metal tongs um, that can function as a rudimentary grabber uh, if if that kind of thing is needed. Uh, dresses in a decaying old naval uniform with a mix of patches and medals from uh, crazy random nations and services. Um, Whaleback Willie <coughs> used to be a sea captain, and stories indicate both military and civilian sailing experience. Sailing days ended with the incident, as yet never expanded upon what exactly that was, but gestures vaguely with the tongs whenever he refers to it. Lives in the beach and rotted out hull of an old frigate, now deathly afraid of entering water, or blood, for that matter. <laughs> Perfect. Also! So when he sees also, blood, he's... Oh, 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 oh. Shut the fuck up, Kelly. We're not done yet. Also! <laughs> unique talent. Can communicate fluently with elephant seals, provided they are speaking the South Seas dialect. <laughs> Perfect. Is the South Seas dialect that pirate voice? Like, is that what that is? No, not that I know of. <laughs> so basically, your character is everything that uh, he Helm McKeelstern is aspiring to be. <laughs> That's yeah, a success say, story. You could say that, like, my character is on, like, the downswing of the career that maybe <laughs> Helm McKeelstern is aspiring to. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. And now I remember why I liked making this story so much. Because <laughs> of the pegging. Yes, naturally. Uh, if there's anything I know about every video game I love, it's that it features a robot that does some sort of sexual act. You know, in the home improvement video game. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Fall of New Vegas, but that's a far more obscure <laughs> reference. All right. So we shall begin with the crew entering the ship in their diving suits and noting pretty quickly that the sub has wedged into the hull in such a way that it's actually created a vacuum seal, leaving the atmosphere of the ship relatively intact. So the, the thing that we have smashed into is a ship. Yes. The, uh, indicate, the indicators on your diving suits show you that there is a survivable amount of oxygen in the ship at this moment. Don't care. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> could not care less. <laughs> I'm sure 66% of this crew might care a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Even. So I I go look to my, my two compatriots here and say, Who would like to go first? I was not programmed to lead. <laughs> <laughs> but only to breed. Yeah. Ooh. Personally, I, I don't want to be in front of Pego. I cannot breed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So Helm McKeelstern puts on his bravest face and he goes, Yar, it, it, it wouldn't be the first time I've gone into danger first. Um, so I'm going to go in first. All right. So. Um... Godspeed you, Helm McKeelstern. <laughs> Also, I remembered, I, I see on my sheet that I'm bad at bravery, so I'm definitely... Yes, yes. Uh, on that note... Oh, um, I'm also bad at bravery? <laughs> incredible. <so. laughs> I love Hego's it. good at bravery, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, well, if that's the case, I'm going to have to get uh, Helm McKeelster to roll a check against their bravery while um, I panically try to find where I saved... Did you say panically? Yes, that's a real word. Shut the okay. fuck up and roll your dice. Kelly, I need you to roll my dice. All right. Uh, so it looks like you got a four there. Oh, boy. No, wait, that's a nine. The lighting is not good. The lighting no. is not good. A mm. nine. All right. A nine. You swallowing your fear and mustering an amount of courage that you haven't seen since you first got that peg leg installed. You unzip the diving suit and remove your helmet and breathe in a breath of stale and somewhat irony 
smelling and tasting air. How irony would you say, like on a scale of like one to Alanis Morissette, or should I say <laughs> Alanis Morissette to like anything that's actually irony? <laughs> I'm going to say closer to Alanis Morissette, but there's definitely some tinges of irony. Okay. Like, like um, it's like rain on your wedding day if you're doing an outdoor wedding. And right. you did that because you are a weather forecaster and you got the gig wrong. Right. Okay. Got so, it. Like somewhat ironic, but you got to really work for it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of irony we're looking at right now. Okay. Can I see any of the blood dripping in here and can I taste it? There is a steady drip of blood happening from a small, small fissure crack along where the sub collided. Okay. It's like uh, a hairline crack. If you can crack. taste it or if you may taste it? I mean, can and can if they choose to. Um, yeah, I would like to, I would like to try and taste it. All right. The, uh, blood when you taste it is, it tastes like blood. It definitely tastes like blood, but it doesn't seem viscous at all. Like, like there's okay. no platelets in it whatsoever. It's not clotting. Okay. So it's not nosebleed blood. It's like anemic blood, not anemic. What's the other word? No, anemic. anyways. No, no, no. Uh, hypo. I don't remember anymore. He hemo okay. Hemophilic. Hem I Thank think you. that's hemophilic. Yeah. Cause that's right. what Sar Nicholas's son had. Right. Yes. Oh, sad. Um, cool. Cool. Good to so, know. Yeah. So it is certainly blood. Yeah, I, I have this be blood we, uh, for sure. Do we know uh, are are we aware of what portion of the ship we have crashed into? Are we like uh, well if you look if you look around, if you roll a perception, in fact. All right. Can <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Here, I, I I have my dice unless you want to roll for me. For oh, the integrity I trust of the roll. game. I, I I trust your role. Okay. Yeah, we believe Let's you. See. Let's yeah. see. And our dice cam stinks, so. <laughs> uh, I rolled a, a a five and a one, so a six. All right. So, you look around and you see, through your knowledge of ship stuff. I don't I don't know how to word that. I'm not a ship guy. <laughs> Shippery. You notice that you are near the bow. I believe the word the is ship. knowledge, but it's spelled like N A U L E D G. <laughs> the bow of the ship. And this particular model of ship, you know from your civilian service, has in this area the captain's quarter, a dining hall a little bit farther be, uh, behind that, closer to the stern than the bow, and a general use washroom. Immediately to your right. General use, does that mean like any genders or does that mean like you can use it for whatever the fuck you want? Like you could wash your hands in the toilet if you wanted. I was good. I'm surprised you went with washing your hands and not like doing blow or something like that. But. <laughs> okay, Grand Prairie. <laughs> but yeah, general use means that anyone or anything can use that washroom. Okay. But would Neat. I need to? Also hear a slight groaning of the hull from the pressure from how deep you guys are. Is it definitely the hull or what's Pego doing? <laughs> a slight groaning. <laughs> I can be programmed to go to any depth. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure who Pego is talking to right now. <laughs> just, 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 uh, just musing, it's, it's, just musing it, out loud. It's their advertisement regulations. If they if they don't uh, engage in pegging every forty five minutes to an hour, they have to repeat their uh, advertising slogans. So if we're gonna if we're gonna do anything with trying to salvage this ship, we should probably see if there's any way that we could. Uh, move it under its own power. So we should probably find the engine room. Affirmative. Okay. And uh, I pretend that I haven't heard you and I say, 
Yar, yeah, it's probably it'd probably be a good idea to look for the engine room. I'm thought of that idea myself. <laughs> I know what I'm yeah, doing. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of impro- I, I'm kind of enjoying Kelly being the straight man for once in uh, <laughs> in a game. <laughs> um, I, my characters are always serious. <laughs> All right, so with that in mind, how are you guys going to seek to? So are are there any kind of interactable looking? panels or like purpose-built r2d2 slots well i won't i won't make you roll perception on this because it is too glaringly obvious to miss but Mm -hmm. there's a console near one of the doors and above the door it says captain's quarters ensign mckillstern if i may i think it's best that i approach the captain's quarters do i have your permission is is this robot a sub? <laughs> I am programmed in a variety of roles. Would you like me to be a sub? <laughs> <laughs> I yes, because I want to see. In this context, I am simply obeying the chain of command as you I have assumed to be an ensign and I do not rank from from my military experience, I suspect that this room that is labeled Captain's Quarters is, in fact, a trap. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Unknown. <laughs> so what is your plan to determine this? I am going to have Pego <laughs> oh. go to try to open the door. <laughs> well, if you would have me. <laughs> Uh, all right so you're you're gonna tell pego to open the door i'm gonna suggest oh uh, okay pego open the door i'm gonna plant the idea in his head i'm gonna inception i'm gonna in- inception it into his head uh you're you're gonna inception an idea into my head yeah 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 the idea Go of going it. to try to open that door into your sweet robot brain so i'm gonna get you to roll persuasion then okay Am I rolling some kind of like opposing? I'm going to say roll perception. I would say perception. Okay, I'm normal at that. So that so that he can perceive what I'm trying to do to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I rolled another another five and a one, so I have a six. All right. And what does Pego have? Hey, it landed on the camera that time. Uh, I got a nine. A nine. All right. So you can see that they're trying to pull a fast one on you. Yeah, not out of any... He, he, oh, don't, don't rope me into this. I, <laughs> this is not my idea. I only but have good ideas. you also ideas. know that it's it's not malicious. It is more... Uh, it is Callous. more a case of just, like, there's less chance of you dying from a trap than a squishy human. But I, I've noticed that he was trying to incept Yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. Captain Admiral McKeelstern, I perceive that you are attempting to make your idea appear as though it is mine. I believe you deserve the credit as a Captain Admiral. You know that McKeelstern is not Tanner's character, right? I was doing a bit. Of course, I know that I am referring to uh, (laughs) Captain Admiral Whaleback Willie. I actually thought that, that that played along well with, with the narrative because <laughs> of McKeelstern trying to sort of be what Wellback Willie is. So the idea that that you know yeah, you'd be trying would, to pull would be, fast one. Would be taking credit for, for what they thought was a good idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well I think for, some, for whatever reason, uh I had already pegged and uh, like having parsed all of Whaleback Willie's medals, I looked at them and was like, well, you know, th- this person has this like this admiral insignia over here and captain insignia over here. They must be a- an admiral captain. And, and they completely uh, flubbed their name. Yeah, Not an well, admiral captain, but an admirable captain. Yes. <laughs> oh. 
I was not programmed to do bits. I will perform a self-diagnostic to see if there has been blood ingress into key circuits. Um, so I say, ER, I, if this Excellent robot... Excellent TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, it took me a second. I'm not going to lie. I just laughed with the group. I don't know what we're laughing about. Um, good. Hanson McGillstern, you said ER. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there might be Stupid. some blood in there. <laughs> I must restate, I was not programmed to do this. <laughs> I am not certain why this is happening. <laughs> okay, so um, I say, Yar, I, uh, this robot clearly be a sub and, and I naturally uh, be a dom, so I'm going to try to also convince this robot to risk his life for us. Okay, well, I'm going to get you to roll intimidation. Please, McKillstern, you are not dumb. You are intelligent and wise. Believe in yourself. <laughs> you're going to roll an intimidation because you're attempting to dominate oh, this submissive I was, I was robot. hoping that I could roll persuasion because that's I'm good well, at that, but... That's okay. incorrect. Can you roll for me, Kelly? Uh, sure. What are, what are you rolling? Uh, intimidation, and you are rolling resilience this time well but i'm i'm not i'm not saying i won't go do the thing i just i just wanted uh willback willie to take the credit for the good plan yeah but now you're being yelled at by somebody else so you're okay. you have to still roll resilience for it okay so are you good or bad or normal at this i'm normal i don't i'm not i'm not a particularly good dumb all right well i'm i'm a normal also so i'm gonna be red and you're gonna be green okay i can see that you might have gotten 11 whomever green is I already forgot who Green is. It's me. All right. So it looks like Green heartily wins. So give us a really dominating reason for this robot to go hit the console. Yar, listen here, you bad, bad robot. You're going to go open that door. I'll spank you hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been a good robot. <laughs> However, if you wish to spank me, this is within my programming. <laughs> Due to the extremely aggressive, intimidating, domineering way that McKillstern says the command, you know that you won't even get that programmable spanking if you don't interact with the console. Or the door, rather. Sorry, the door. I perceive that you want me to interact with the door first and we'll consider spanking later and i <laughs> and i start heading over to the to the door all right the the steel door riveted with extra plating seems almost impossible to move without some sort of extra strength ability or some other means so is there is there like a like an interactable panel with it or well the console right beside the door right so can I put my R two D two thing in the console <laughs> there is there is unfortunately only a keyboard in this case there's only a keyboard uh I guess I can kind of finger type like one finger yeah. type with my R two D two thing all right the what is the first key that you press the console comes to life it groans and clatters and you see. In a, uh, if you've ever seen The Matrix, the way that the text scrolls across like that, sure. you see a sentence flash. It says, enter coordinates. More information required. Hello, computer. Do you wish to interface? The computer is unfortunately an outdated model that lacks an ability to be interfaced with outside of normal keyboard commands. So what I see is basically like a flashing like yeah, text Yeah, flashing green screen. enter coordinates with an input line underneath it. So w would I know what like the coordinates, like the space coordinates of our ship were as it crashed? Uh, you wouldn't offhand, no. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to... 
does it like does it suggest like there's like a character limit or some kind of like format that I would recognize the coordinates to be in? A longitudinal latitudinal entry. Ensign McGillister, do you wish me to begin guessing at coordinates? I may make guesses at a rate of. Uh, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to roll for how many guesses I can make per. All minute. right. Uh, fuck. It's fine. I got three. Three. I can okay. make three guesses per minute <laughs> when operating at peak capacity. Oh, good lord. <laughs> uh,. My self-diagnostic is complete. There appears to be minor blood ingress, which is shorting out bit prevention protocols and maybe slowing uh, coordinate guessing abilities. ER, I suggest we put in the coordinates 6969. Those be my favorite numbers. I put those in. The uh, screen doesn't give a confirmation or denial, but the line immediately blanks out and keeps blipping just with enter coordinates. Okay, well, that that wasn't a guess from me, so I'm going to put in a guess. All right. Can, do I just like roll for how good the guess is, or do I have to give you something? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do a... Uh... Ooh. That's a tough one. I you don't really have a luck stat, which is what I would usually go with in this situation. Uh, so let's go with. I mean, what is luck if not wisdom? Uh, in, the opposite of that, actually, I would say. Oh. Um. Let's go with. We could just say I'm normal at luck, and I'll just roll it like a normal. Yeah, we might as well, because yeah, I, I can't see a stat that makes me scream luck. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want you to scream. Luck. All right, so that's a five. That's not great. Your three guesses are all not rejected, but not accepted by the computer. Oh no, I can only do three guesses in a minute. That was yeah. one guess. Oh, you're gonna okay. give me about twenty seconds before I can guess again. Gotcha, gotcha. Is anyone else gonna do At anything in the peak meantime? operating capacity? I, I'm going to stick with my suspicion that even if we get through this door, it's not going to go well for us because it's probably booby trapped. So we are. Go with, I don't have a problem with that. There'll be boobies we, on the other side of this door. I, <laughs> I suggest we redouble our efforts. <laughs> I suspect, I suspect that where we need to get to in the captain's quarters, I suspect is in fact what is labeled as the bathroom. That is how things used to go when I was in the military, is that the captain's quarters are always disguised as the bathroom. So let's head over there. Which military was this? <laughs> this was Sir. the... Uh, <laughs> ha- have you ever heard of the uh, the Symbionese Liberation Army? In no? passing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think I read a book about that once, but please, please remind the... the- the other people in the room. Patty Hearst was our most famous member. No. no. <laughs> that one's Nothing? lost on me, I'm oh! afraid. Oh, come on. Have you ever heard the song? Uh, have you ever heard the song Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner by Warren Zevon? Sorry, the only yes. ship related. Uh, yes, I have. Okay. The ship related songs I listen to are Stan Rogers related. That's not a ship song necessarily. It's about the it's about the wars in the Congo. So in the final verse of Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. He he says the line, Patty Hearst heard the burst of Roland's Thompson gun and bought it. That is a reference to Patty Hearst, who is the heiress to the Hearst fortune. She was kidnapped by uh, like a terrorist group called the Symbionese Liberation Army. Um, and then she ended up, I believe it was robbing a bank with them. That's like how she resurfaced after she was kidnapped as a member of this organization, actively participating in one of their attacks. Incredible. Yeah, because she got really Stockholm syndrome, right? Exactly. She, she's like the most famous like case of like that that people put forward of, I, of how I would this ar- happens. I would argue the second most famous case, the first one being, you know, the one that is named after. What is it named <laughs> after? Isn't it Stockholm. The- it's a city in Sweden. <laughs> 
Like I believe that. What, well, honestly, what, yeah, what, I got the reference, but Pego didn't. Pego's not <laughs> operating at peak operating capacity. Never mind. I thought that it was named after. Anyways, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's a bank it's named after Institute. John Stockholm. <laughs> Happened in Johnny Stockholm, Stocks. Sweden. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. All Anyways, right. sorry. We can so continue. You're gonna enter the okay. So, you, so you, what happened was you answered Pego's question. Yes. Uh, and he went. I trust your judgment. That sounds like a good army. <laughs> <laughs> so. The bathroom Please bear doesn't in mind, appear to I was be locked. Not programmed with military knowledge. I was programmed <laughs> to love, which is arguably as opposing as the concept can get. <laughs> <laughs> So, upon pushing on the bathroom door, Apologies you find for it open. Love to you. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the door pushes open with almost no resistance. You can hear the hinges squeak slightly under the small amount of rust that is built up on them. Inside, it's a bathroom. There. Damn it! <laughs> It appears to be in relatively good condition, considering the fact that the ship is underwater and a wreck. But attached to a completely stripped, flesh-stripped hand, you see a chain with a brass key attached to it. Oh, yeah. Neat. Is it just a hand, or is there other thing? Is there, like, a whole body attached to it? Just a hand. Oh. Can I put in my second guess? Because I feel like I'm still down at the console. Yes, you, you sure can. Yeah, right. you know, I, I I don't know if this one's still usable, but would this hand be preferable to the tongs? <laughs> Wait, Willie, would you like to replace? I don't I, I, I don't know how hands work. <laughs> oh, a 10. At my age, I'm I'm really up for anything. So sure, let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as Pego puts his entry in, he punches in the coordinates of his guess, and the longitudinal coordinates are accepted. They remain locked in, but the latitudinal coordinates are incorrect. How do I, how do I know this? Do I get like a, a nice little chime indicating it? There's, it, it remain, the, the numbers remain on the screen with a comma separating what you expect are the missing parts of the coordinates. But and just, no to be just to be no. clear, it, it, it's not 69, correct? It I is just, not. Affirmative. I wanted to, I, you know, I, guys, I wanted to bring this up because I was really disappointed I said 69 earlier and no one said nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to revisit that. <laughs> so, the numbers that remain on the screen are... 39.2645 degrees north. The number R is 39.2... What was it? 2645 <laughs> degrees north. The number is 39.2645 degrees north. Hopefully one of you can do something with that information. <laughs> Personally, I'm, I'm more interested in the key all right we so found? are you taking the key yes i'm gonna all take right. the key all right and the hand i'm, I'm taking the hand <laughs> all right <laughs> separately or together <laughs> i might as well keep them together so i don't lose either one all right putting it into a spare pocket on your jacket you put the bony hand with its fist still curled around the chain containing the brass key. Can I put my third guess into the console? You sure can. Five. That, the uh, coordinates are rejected. The coordinates ones you got correct are still rejected. there. Do you want me to continue trying? Yar, you know, sometimes I, I forget a lot of things, so sometimes I be writing things down when they're important. Is there, might there be in this room somewhere where these coordinates might be written down? Is there, can I roll a perception? You, you sure can roll a perception. <laughs> cool. An eight. So, 
Beside the console, hidden almost inconspicuously, but still visible to someone who's just studying it enough, you see a small keyhole beside <gasps> the door. Willie, I suggest we put your key in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> is All right, well, but Whaleback well, Willie is still in the bathroom, right? Yes. And I've got the key, and you don't have to tell me twice. So I'm going to put it in the hole. <laughs> Captain Admiral hey, Willie, hey, while you are in the bathroom, can you tell me if there is any writing in there, specifically on the wall of the, the stalls? That's good thinking. Back in the day, we, we used to scrawl all the important coordinates right on the bathroom <laughs> stall. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm not going to get your old perception on this. Uh, all you see is the typical sailor's graffiti, including what appears to be a rendition of a small boy peeing on the logo of what appears to be a rival ship company. Ha. Is there is there like space in the wall or is it pretty full? It's uh, it's pretty full. You can see there's been some pretty bored sailors killing company time on the toilet. Captain Admiral Willie, is there room to write more? Yes, but you're gonna have to reach for it, son. It's way up there. I will move and give you access to the console. And so I, I leave the console and I head into the bathroom. All right. I'm assuming you're going to insert the key into the keyhole there, uh, Whaleback? Oh, don't you know it. Yeah, so while he's doing that, I'm going to find a spot in the bathroom wall to write uh, for a good time call Pego, and then I kind of put in my, like, subspace uh, key or however I get communicated with. All right, sounds good. Like sounds a, good. QR like code? A, a QR code, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It is important to put yourself out there. How is the key going? As the key turns, you hear a hiss of an hermetically sealed door unlocking, and the captain quarters door swings open mechanically and automatically. Yar, Willie. Uh, Whaleback, can I call you, may I call you Whaleback? Please, please. <laughs> Whaleback, I suggest you go in please, first. Please, Mr. Willie was my father. <laughs> 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 You can see that the room is still well, relatively well lit. The light bulb is dimming with age, but you still have a relatively clear vision of the room as you walk in. I enter the room and I take a gander. I always like to see what fellow captain's quarters look like. And on the bedside table, I see a, what looks to be the collected writings of Gabriele D'Annunzio. <laughs> What a find. The captain's quarters is relatively well decorated. You can see that he has pinned a few accreditations to services that you don't quite recognize, but look familiar in a vague sense. Like they're close to what you would have received in your own time, and yet somehow strange and different. Almost alien. There's also, on the dresser, a well-crafted, well-polished, and very well-used corncob pipe and a map. And on that map is a particular island marked out with an X with two sets of coordinates on it. You recognize the first part of the coordinates as some of the numbers that were successfully put into the console by Pego. I'm going to start going through the dresser with my R2-D2 tool and see if I find anything good. I immediately go for the corn cob pipe because it looks very captain-y. Perfect, perfect. And on the bed, as you're going for the corn cob pipe, you also see an extremely finely pressed suit and Ooh. a lockbox. Here. The lockbox is about the size of a jeweler's box, like uh, a little bit bigger than like say a music box or something like that. Uh, as you riff through the drawers, by the way, uh, Pego, you find that every single one of the drawers is completely barren. 
No clothes, no remnant of clothes. Completely and totally empty. Does Pego's body shape permit him to wear a suit or a jacket? I believe no, because that's why I didn't put a full dive suit on. Yeah, it's kind of I, I don't believe Pego is shaped. Because I'm very large and boxy. It's sort of like a box on triangular treads with a boxy head. I'm probably I'm generally larger boxy? than a person. Shut the fuck up, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I only ask I because I, 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 I... And I talk like this. And... <laughs> <laughs> I only ask because I like to run a professional outfit and I like to have everyone wearing a jacket if possible. That's fair. That's fair. Unfortunately, uh, Pego will not be able to fit into that finely pressed suit. You can drape things over my uh, equivalent of shoulders. The top of the main box, if you will. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I do it. I you do it for you. Got it. You, the, you drape the, you cannot the jacket. imagine how hard it is to find nice things in my size. <laughs> <laughs> the jacket drapes awkwardly over Pego, but... He is his chassis is now somewhat covered by the jacket. His what? Chassis. Oh, <laughs> I thought you said his chastity. Oh, his chastity. <laughs> Trust me, that is long gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the pego I know. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you have the jacket draped over pego. Uh, what else is your plan here? There's the map and the lockbox. I the suggest putting the remaining coordinates into the console. Someone should really do that. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Pego is just like they're they're just looking through just other, looting. anywhere else. Straight they up can looting. Look. Yeah, anything else that can be looted in this room. Hmm. Um, I go for. I'm gonna. Yeah, sir. I'm gonna do that. You're going to punch in the second, the final part of the coordinates? Well, punch is an aggressive word. I'm going to gently finger them in. Ah, uh, gently fingering. <laughs> of course, proper foreplay. Mm. Um, there is a terrific grinding sound as steel grates against steel. And what sounds like we are pego would be that are you sticking your dick in the ship again <laughs> i i poke my head out into the hallway negative <laughs> but i i noticed the way that you fingered in those coordinates <laughs> perhaps sometime we can swap notes <laughs> <laughs> and with a crash that sounds half good half bad like a blockage has been uh, freed, but not particularly nicely to the machine that was freeing the blockage, you feel the ship itself shudder violently. Scanning. I have assessed the situation to be 50% good. <laughs> Precisely. With a violent lurch that caused you all to have to roll a reaction... So this is this is me first. I'm gonna roll both because I'm good at it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, nine I'd say for that. Okay. Uh, and the roll for Nicole now. I'm normal at this. A ten. Hell yeah. Psh, 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 All right, and Tanner, psh, psh, what did you roll? Let's see. I'm I'm normal at reaction. So okay. What'd you roll? Three. A three. All right. When the violent lurching of the ship happens, well, Pego's treads make him very stable, and he is unmoved at all and stays promptly on his on his two treads. Um, and hell what it's worth, I don't think Pego really has a gender. I I just go with I just go with that for now because I'm lazy. Oh yeah, let's default male. It's not like yeah. that's a major problem with our society. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Just Helm McKeelstern, also a male. Large chest does not mean I am male. <laughs> uh, is able to balance precariously on their peg leg, but then 
sets down and braces themselves and completely fails to fall over. However, Whaleback Willie, not expecting this, gets blasted backwards and hits their head on the bed, in which case the lockbox falls on their lap and they look at it dazedly. Admiral Captain Willie, what is in the box? I don't know. I'm quite dazed right now, son. You might have to open it yourself. <laughs> Acknowledge. And so I go over and I attempt to open the box with the... When when all you have is an R2-D2 just, tool, just every problem it. looks like an R2-D2 hole. <laughs> Unfortunately, the more you examine the box, you see that it doesn't appear to have a single seam on it. It looks to be completely unopenable. I believe this be one of them lament configurations. <laughs> That's from, a good reference. From the Hellraiser franchise. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Are you certain it is not a brick? Bricks often resemble boxes with no openings because they are a similar shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to scan. I want to scan the box to see. I was going to say, Pego, if, if you could roll a perception, I got a three. You got a three. Your your scan doesn't reveal anything on there, on the box at all. It is shiny and black, very glossy almost to the point where you could see your reflection on it. I must report that I cannot rule out that this object is not a brick. <laughs> in the Hellraiser series, didn't, how do you open the boxes? Do you get put blood on them, or is that in something else that I'm thinking of? Uh, I think I have not box. been programmed with pop culture knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's lots of pressing buttons and twisting and whatnot. Oh, okay. There's no buttons. Are are there any? Yeah, are uh, we whale back? Tell me, tell me. Are there any? Be there any buttons or soft places that you can press on this here box? Uh, I I do be feeling that there is a a squishy segment on this side. <laughs> squishy. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue pressing on it and see what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need you to roll on agility. How, how fast am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> no, how nimbly are you doing it? <laughs> okay. Rolling agility. Four. A four. I'm going to switch right. dice. Your, uh... Captain Admiral Willie, I must <laughs> recommend that you do not simply aggressively poke at the squishy <laughs> section. <laughs> I would recommend using a softer approach with a lighter touch. As take your time. As Pego is saying that, a needle ejects from the lockbox and stabs into the thumb that you were pressing rapidly on, piercing Arr! through the thumb, through the nail, and merging on the other side of the thumb. Arr! Arr! God damn it! Arr! Yeah. <laughs> and as if it wasn't even there to begin with, it extracts itself. And you can't even see where the needle came from. I guess that wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, I I feel like I, um, be, because I think healing is part of loving, I think it stands to reason that Pego would be programmed to, like, immediately respond to any kind of, like, injury or distress. Okay, all so right. So I'm, I'm there in a second, and... Like, would I would I be able to perceive pretty quickly, like, what the problem is? Uh, yeah, I mean, without even uh, rolling it, you can see a very... Admiral Willie, what is the problem? <laughs> about the size of a hypodermic needle has been punched entirely through Whaleback Willie's thumb. I believe I was just tested for diabetes, son. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral Captain Willie, you have been injured. I am programmed with a healing salve. Please place your thumb into the healing hole and i like right where the kind of like facial features of the robot are because like there's visual sensors they're sort of like a, a pretty like mouth looking hole and it just like opens <laughs> this is how we Please used to do it in the navy <laughs> with and, uh, uh yeah if he puts his thumb into yeah. my like kind of face area hole i'm gonna attempt to use my you know like they say like dog spit is healing or whatever yeah. like yeah, it, yeah you have the equivalent of spit, spit but it works as a bomb that just uh it it doesn't heal 
but it does stop the minor amount of bleeding that is coming from the wound. It's just super glue. Basically. <laughs> All right, we'll open up that hole, son. <laughs> Affirmative. That feels good. <laughs> was it good for you as it was for me? The uh, ship lumbers on forward. You can feel it increasing speed to a point where it is very noticeable. Yar, I wonder, I do wonder what else there be on this ship. I'm going to think I might take a little explore and see um, if there's somewhere I can, I don't know, take a shit. <laughs> well, there was a bathroom. <laughs> no, no, somewhere else. I'm a, I'm a very private person. I can't shit in public washrooms. Bathrooms on these vessels are for art. They're not for shitting. <laughs> <laughs> well... As it stands, there's only one additional door in this part of the ship, and it's, you see it's labeled as a dining hall. Yeah, I, I go into the dining hall. Dining hall reveals a fully housed room. There appears to be tables and chairs laid out for 50 to 75 crew members. It appeared that a banquet was in progress, because you see each chair occupied by a bleached skeleton covered in rags and rotten robes. Are they human-shaped skeletons? Every one of the uh, skeletons appears to be humanoid by the skull. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll up behind Helm Stern here. All right. Edson Stern, do you require assistance in sampling these skeletons? Sampling, or yeah, I suppose. And I'm very confused because I immediately think like the samples you get at Costco. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I guess you, 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 you know, robots. You do what robots do, so I don't. I I, I won't stop you. Yeah, I I don't think you'll be confused very long because what Pego does to sample things is go and like kind of like pick them up with the R two D two claw and place it into the the very same hole that it heals with. <laughs> Because there's some sensors there. So there's just sort of like a bone fragment sticking out of the face area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a multi-purpose hole. It's more of a cloaca. Just like all the holes, am I right? <laughs> you, upon your scanning of the bone, it is a normal human bone. It fits within a 99.875 percentage chance of being human. It is made of calcium, but you notice a thin, almost non-existent acidic layer over the bones, as if some sort of corrosive substance was poured over the entire body. Analysis complete. And then I proceed to explain everything you just said to them. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, robot, uh, pego. <laughs> if you can sample things, do you think you can sample the ocean and see if it actually is blood? Because that is a mystery that I, the, the true mystery that I be trying to solve here. Acknowledged. And so I head over to the, so we came in basically via like a breach in our hull that managed to match up to a breach in their hull, if I understand you correctly. Yes. Okay. So... I believe there are some fissure cracks or around it, though, that are dripping slight amounts of blood. And there isn't like stress on them from the movement of. Never mind. I don't want to. I don't want to drown us. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> are, and there's no like there's no windows or portholes or displays in either ship that we've come across that would like show us outside or. For some reason, this ship that you've come across has not had a single glass window facing outwards. What about our ship? Yours could not handle the pressure of the dive if it had had glass windows. Okay, so we may or may not be still like, we're moving, we might be moving through the blood, but we also might be above it, like we don't know. You don't know at the moment. But I, but if I go to like the breach area, there is still some dripping blood. Yeah. 
uh, okay, so I what I do is I kind of like like I crane my neck, the equivalent of a neck back, so that my robot face faces up, and I allow the blood to drip into the sample hole. It's given that blood is still dripping. I would make the estimation that we are still under blood. <laughs> the blood returns as blood. It is. It is certainly blood. But the DNA profile certainly blood. does not match anything that you've ever noticed uh, noted in your database. The DNA, DNA profile matches is nothing found in database. All right. Well, that's fucking gross. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. I'm way more grossed out now. Uh, I'm going My to. My apologies. <laughs> I was not programmed to perceive gross. <laughs> oh, that's good. I guess you wouldn't. Pego hasn't been programmed to yuck other people's yums. <laughs> um, Affirmative. <laughs> I'm going to continue to explore the dining hall. What else is in there? Wait, here, can I, is there a kitchen? There is a kitchen, and attached to the kitchen appears to be another door leading into the other ship, parts of the ship, but it is completely and totally caved in. Oh. The doorway is Caved mangled. In with, like, with like rocks? No. <laughs> no, with steel girders and twisted steel. Okay, cool. You can see that the path looks almost non navigable. Almost non navigable, but maybe slightly navigable. That's what it's that's what it's saying. Okay, I'm gonna try to navigate it. Navigate right. navigate. I'm gonna need you to roll an agility. That's you, big shoots. Okay, how are you at agility? I am normal at agility. Ooh. Oh, yeesh. So, as you're attempting to climb over the rubble, you manage to punch your peg leg through one particularly weak section of the caved-in steel, and... You hear a hissing sound. Uh oh. Blood starts gushing through the hole that you just punched. <laughs> oh no, yar. Detecting uh, blood ingress once again. <laughs> Is everything okay, Ensign <laughs> McGillstern? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, everything's everything's fine over here, fellas. Everything is super cool. Um, I'm gonna try and jam my peg leg in there a little bit further. <laughs> seal up the hole. I want you to roll. So the hole that you made with your peg leg, you're just gonna hit it harder with your peg leg. Well, yeah, because it's like my peg leg is tapered, so if I can like push it in there, and maybe it'll like come up around. Yeah. Yeah, like the the guy who had to put his <laughs> finger in the dike uh, yeah. in the Netherlands. Josh, you can't use that word anymore. <laughs> okay, what's the God what are you making it. me roll? Uh, let's let's go with reaction. It is a reaction roll. Okay, I have speed. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I think that's a problem. We we don't want more speed here. <laughs> if you have speed and you are not sharing, I am going to feel like I've been holding out. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Um, what, what, how normal, much am I, what am I rolling? Normal at reaction, so just one set of dice. Okay. Well, I dropped the green one on the floor, so. Oh no. With be a nine. astonishing reflexes, <laughs> you jam your peg leg into the hole, <laughs> and you feel the pressure suck it in a little bit and wedge itself tightly. The blood stops pouring into the ship. Is that how pressure works? Yes. <laughs> if, something's, <laughs> if something's pushing in, it sucks it in down somehow? Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I'm not going to argue. Okay, I'm going to twist off a my peg leg. Look up the science. It's, it's, it's the viscosity. It's the viscosity and all. That, that, <laughs> gotcha. That's what. Yeah, right. just ask ask Ryan. He'll back me up. Okay, I'll I'll ask him later. Oh, should I bring him in for an expert witness? <laughs> yeah, we'll get our expert opinion here. Oh. Yeah, no. Um, so okay. as you do that, um, whale back. I need you to roll a quick little perception for me. Hey, the characters are on a first name basis with whale back Willie. I don't think you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just have to call him Mister Willie. Mister yeah. Willie. Willie Junior. Mr. Mr. Bang. 
Whale backs back. Yeah, All Willie's right. a title. It's first name whale, last name back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Esquire, but it's Willie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A six. A six. Crackling from the monitor, you hear a slight feminine voice. Time to destination. It's 96 hours. 96 hours? It keeps beeping in five second intervals and then repeating, it's time to destination. Slowly but surely, the vessel glides through the blood. And that's where we're going to stop for today. It appears we have much time. Would you like me to suggest some activities <laughs> that will spend time? Looks like a hard no. <laughs> well, I'm kind and of with that I'm crushing stuck in the emotional right disappointment. <laughs> yeah. That's where we leave our our heroes. And there we are. You've continued your blood ocean adventures.